Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to install Unify 6.0.43 into a Proxmox container, next on Low Res DIY. Okay, if you already have Unify controller running on your desktop or on a Raspberry Pi, the first thing we're going to want to do is get the latest backup from that version. So we'll go to settings, scroll down the backups. My last one was on 1226 of 2020. What a horrible year. And we're going to download it. Once we're done downloading it, you can close that out and you can actually shut it off. So I'm going to shut it off. All right. Then we're going to switch over to our Proxmox server. I have already started a container with uh, Debian 10, I believe is what I, I used. And I gave it four cores, two gigs of uh, memory, 512 swap. And I gave it a eight gigabyte hard drive, which is way more than we really need for this. But I don't know, it was the default, so I just picked it. We don't need four cores either we really only need one one cpu for, to uh run the unify controller i only put it at four to speed the installation process up once everything's installed up and running i'll come back i'll switch it to one core and run with just one core so we're going to go to the council and i'm basically going to do a bunch of copy and pasting here but i'll put these commands in the description for you so this one here all it will do is update uh, the debian server it'll go out and get the latest certificates and it will install uh, wget we'll let that run the next command well it went too fast there sorry but it will do a wget then it will go out to the uh net and get Unify 6.0.43 Backspace on that because we've already run it and then once that's done, we're going to start this bash script Now it's going to go through it's going to start updating the system and it's going to start downloading and installing any programs that the or any applications that the script will need to use to run uh or install the unified controller now i did not come up with this script it was actually i found this on the unify uh forums this guy glenn r whoever glenn r is thank you very much because this really simplified the installation of unify i'll leave uh a link to this page in the description also if you want to go out there and check out the other options he has on here. So this will take a little while to run and update everything. We'll just let it run and be back in a second. All right, it's gonna ask you here if you wanna keep the script on, on the uh, system, you can if you want. I'm not going to, so I'm gonna pick in. Do you wanna proceed with the updates? Yes, we do. All right, so you'll notice that while it was uh, running through that, that the installation of Unify, before that it threw th some things in there like Mongo and it went out and updated your certificates and everything. That's kind of the beauty of this script that Glenn ran. It, it goes out there and gets you every app that the Unify controller is uh, dependent upon to run. So you don't have to go find them and install them yourself. So the last thing we're going to want to do here is uh, it's going to ask you if you would like to update the Unify Network Controller via, via APT. And what APT is, it's just a uh, installation and removal software that Debian and, and uh, Ubuntu use, uh, use to, let's say, the first part of the script, it downloaded a 
an application that it needed to install Unify Controller, but Unify Controller doesn't actually need it to run. Well, it'll go find that and it'll remove it for you, saving space on your hard drive and, and such. So yes, we're gonna go ahead and do that. And it will actually find one here. I think it was called Netcat or something like that, that it will, will remove. But once it's finished with this, controller yeah there it is netcat the unified controller should be up and running all right so it's done and it's telling us to go to this website right here so we're going to copy that and open another window and paste it in there hit enter and eventually it'll come up like this we want to advance because uh it's telling you this connection is not private, but it's in our home. We know it's fine. Proceed. And now you have the uh, uh, splash screen to where you can start setting this up. We're going to agree to the end user agreement, and we're going to want to restore from a backup. So we're going to pick this right here. It's going to ask it to list backups. It's going to say there's nothing there, but right here. Alternately, you can upload backup files. So we want to upload one to that. Mine went into the downloads file. Here's one I downloaded earlier. We're going to pick the latest one that I downloaded. Hit open. You're going to confirm it. And it's going to begin the uh, restoration process. So from here on out, it's pretty much just sitting back, letting it do its thing. And eventually we'll we'll see the uh, controller pop up. So we'll just wait until that happens. Yeah, just like that. Switched away and came back, and it's up. So I'm gonna log on. And this is what you're probably gonna get. It it's gonna be red all over the place and problem is oh wow it's catching them already i've had this happen where there'll be nothing here it won't find anything but if you just leave it alone i think it took the first time i tried this i think it took about 20 minutes just leave it alone it will eventually find everything and uh if it doesn't find everything i've had to do this before also you can just go and restore your USG or your, your APs or, or your switches and just hit that little button and default them back to factory and eventually it will find it all and you can reprovision everything. So I'm going to let this go. It's reprovisioning everything. It's up and running. But let's say you're new to this. This is the first time you've installed the controller. I have another one here let me see if i can remember where it's at by four i think yeah okay so you don't have a backup to uh restore from so you still have to agree to the user license you can change the name of the unified controller i thought it was cool to call mine beer garden two years ago when i first installed it uh so whatever you can name it whatever you want just going to leave it like that you'll click next and then it will ask you to sign in to your your uh, ubiquity account i don't have one i don't want one so uh well it'll ask you to sign in so click on the switch to advanced setup enable remote access turn that off use your ubiquity account for local local access turn that off now it's going to ask you to uh, create a login. This is just your login to your local system here. So call it whatever you want. Give it a password. And then go ahead and give it an email address. This is the same deal. It'll uh, If it has any issues or, or whatever, it'll send you an email. Automatically optimize the network. I'm fine with that. That's up to you. Enable auto backups. I, I would say go ahead and do it because you may not think it, but you will use one eventually. Then it's nice to have them there. So click next. If you don't have any, if you have your devices already hooked up, it should start finding them here. And uh, 
letting you know that it, that they found them. I don't have any new devices. Everything I have is already associated with the uh, Unify controller that we just installed. So I'm gonna click next. It'll ask you for a Wi-Fi name. Again, I thought it was cool to call mine Beer Garden way back when. Call yours whatever you want to call it. And give it a password. This will be the password that this, the name you give it is the name that it, it uh, sends out for your devices to find. So this will be the low res Wi-Fi champ. And the password is the password that people will need to, to log on to that Wi-Fi network. So, oh, and you can combine, can combine the 2G and 5G uh, Wi-Fi networks into one name. I leave them split out just so I can tell what's on the 2G network and what's on the 5. Click next, double check everything, your country and your time zone. Hit finish and it's going to start running through, a, well, it's going to bring everything up for you. Uh, it's going to ask you if you want to uh, send information back to Ubiquity to help them, you know, make their products better or whatever. I, I just hit don't send. So there you are. It's up and running uh, for you this way. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that subscribe button. Like it if you liked it. And uh, thanks for watching.